Hey everybody, welcome back to the Isaac Abrams Show. I'm your host, Isaac Abrams. Joining me today, actor, writer, producer, philanthropist, and second time guest, first time never came out, Julia Machen. What's up? What's up? Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah. In this episode, we cover uh, relationship stuff. We play this game, Let's Get Deep, the deep edition. And they're basically uh, questions you would meet someone for the first time. Uh, and we talk, we did uh, six would you rathers at the end, and it's all relationship stuff in the middle with a little bit of comedy. Um, Julia, thanks for being here. Thank uh, you. And I hope you enjoy the episode, guys. Here comes the theme music. How's comedy going? Um, I, it's been, it's been good, and then it, I go through a lot of lulls. Yeah. It's str- it changed a lot after the pandemic. Every like my energy for comedy changed. Yeah. Yeah. Just less less wanting to try. No, I mean I like I still do it regularly mm. and a lot. Um it's it's been harder to like get back into the rhythm of things, which I feel like everyone feels that way because of the pandemic. Yeah. And and then you realize how all these things you're so passionate about and dedicated to are disposable. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I lost, I like was out of work and then out of the gym and out of comedy. And I was like, I don't know what I am outside of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because and now everything changed too. Like before Pandy it was one way to become a successful comedian and now it's like all social oh, media yeah. numbers and like doing this shit and like Everyone. clips, 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 clips. And every time I do comedy, everyone's first question used to be, oh, what kind of comedy do you do? But now it's uh, now it's always, oh, do you have anything online? <laughs> yeah. Which I don't do, and I should. I know that's like the thing to do now, but I don't know, I'm not ready to get bullied by 16 year olds again. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I think I posted one thing on TikTok one time and the first comment was just like so mean. And I'm like, for what? And I know all of me knows that mm-hmm. having to post mean things on TikTok, like hiding behind some profile is so pathetic. Yeah. But like, it still hurts. Yeah. And props to the people who do it. And I should, I should just, you know. That's the number one comment on YouTube for and TikTok for this show. It's like every asshole thinks they need a podcast now. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, this asshole thinks he needs a podcast. I think you need a podcast, and I support everyone making a podcast and putting it out there. Like my podcast never really did well. We didn't even like upload it. We would make clips. Mm-hmm. Um, we would video it just to make clips to promote it, but it would reach some people and i would get like dms and messages uh from people saying oh like love your podcast love this thing you you opened up i know and that is enough you know yeah i have people that rent this place that'll just they wrote an hour between them and another person and they're like one they wrote 61 minute clips and they're like oh yeah like every two months they'll come in here and they'll rent it for an hour and then they'll get enough content for two months and they're like i don't need to put a podcast out Right, they just literally just yeah. do clips. So smart. Mm-hmm. I wish I had thought of that. Well, I think the whole podcast should be available. I think the that kind of defeats the beauty of what podcasting was and why it was cool was that it was yeah. just like conversational and you never knew what was going to happen. But ah, it's it, people get mad at a lot of things now. Not that I, not that I don't think people should be accountable for like the things they do and they say but i don't align with everything i say and i've said i right right you know sometimes you say things or you take risks or you think something sometimes you make bad jokes yeah um but that's what's fun about podcasts is it's supposed to sort of be like that but now people are holding a person to the things they say and deciding that that is their perspective. Yeah, they hear one clip and they're like, oh, that encapsulates their whole personality. It's like, well, out of context, we were talking about that for 20 minutes before I made that specific joke about those people. (laughs) That could be anybody. I was gonna say, but now I gotta bleep that out. Oh, yeah. Um, Bleep Bleep just Now I gotta (laughs) twice. (laughs) <laughs> You're so much more organized than I am. Uh, well, I I am and I'm not. Like I would just feel organized today because I'm hyper caffeinated. But I'm yeah. off the road for a little while, so I'm like refocusing on my pod. I didn't put an episode out last week. It's not like a weekly thing because I have like three social media clients and I produce like four podcasts. Then I'm on the road with Drew, so it's like 
everybody else that's paying me has their stuff has to get out and then yeah. when i'm at the end of the day i'm like you have to so, prioritize what you're right. getting paid for and then yeah and then it's like well if, if i don't put a pot out this week is anybody going to notice so now that i'm home for a month i'm like i'm gonna do like 50 episodes i'm gonna put out like three a day hell yeah promote the hell out of them get them out there yeah um i get- love your clips i i used to listen to podcasts all the time and then after making one not as much i don't yeah. sit through the whole podcast if i could just do the pod and not do comedy i think i would do it really like if i had to choose if it was like have a really successful podcast or be a successful comedian i'd rather podcast wow i would choose uh stand up that part of the reason i was struggling with um keeping up with the podcast was because I was working and editing and doing a lot of work on the podcast and it sort of took away from me being able to do as much stand up. Yeah. Cuz ideally I want to be doing it every night. But lately I have fallen off. Like the reason you maybe haven't seen me around as much I have been around, but the mics I do have to be convenient cuz I've been working nights. Yeah. Which- I haven't been around either. I've been on the road. Oh, wait, that actually minutes. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and I don't really hang out in the L.A. scene very much because my I wrote my whole set for, like, the Midwest. Like, oh, I take smart. my little working in Hollywood stories and go tell them to people in Kansas. Well, that was that was Trump's whole, like, thing. His, his campaign was to appeal to middle America. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I don't care like, about selling tickets in L.A. <laughs> like, I, and, I, and that'll win you an election. You know, I might be the president. That would be, I never thought of myself as being eligible to be a president, but I think I'd probably have to graduate from high school first. Apparently you're old enough. Oh yeah, so are you. <laughs> well, actually, no, you got a couple years left. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you gotta be 35. <laughs> I was like, I have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have a college education. It's not a requirement. Oh, really? Yeah, people are like, oh, you gotta be 35 and have a college degree. You don't. Okay. But I think you'd get torn apart if you didn't have one. Right. Who do you think would be a great other than the two candidates that are fuck what's really going on right now yeah who would be like an actor or a celebrity that you think would be a good president oh shoot oh that would actually like be a good president or that would be fun to see as a president <laughs> i that's, mean either one right it's i like, wish i had this question prepared because that's a lot of things there's a lot of celebrities yeah some people say oprah the rock joe mm-hmm. rogan i don't know about any of those <laughs> yeah me either yeah i think um who's the guy from yellowstone the actor, uh, the old actor guy. I guess he's old, too old, but it's not Kirk Douglas. Why? I just watched some Yellowstone yesterday, and I can't think of his name. The guy from Waterworld. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Yeah. He would at least act like a good president. I know that would be cool. <laughs> um, I mean, if we're just gonna get like reality show TV people like Trump, why not get like a really great actor? Like Morgan Freeman would be a great president. Because, I, yeah, I mean, I was like, I'm totally afraid that I'm going to name, like, a non-American actor by accident, like Anthony Hopkins or something. And Is I he not think, American? He's he's British, right? He's a knight. Isn't he knighted? Isn't he oh, Sir, Sir Anthony oh. Hopkins? <laughs> well, there we go. You're getting canceled now. <laughs> how about how about uh, Ralph Fiennes? Or that's Voldemort, right? I think so. Yeah, let's have a... Yeah. let's Because we've already taken a lot of american roles and had the british people play that role Mm -hmm. um we're going back to our roots that's right maybe we just need some british dude in office right yeah (laughs) makes this hat that's australian and they just make us start having tea at 10 and 4 now (laughs) american tea our tea breaks sound nice maybe that would be it does yeah any break sounds pretty good i know true that's the only thing you want to do when you're at work is be like when is my break yeah when do i get a second to myself yeah what about a female president sorry that would be what about wendy williams the talk show host (laughs) okay (laughs) i have no idea uh about women who could be in charge no i of course i do um Oh, all right. How about like this? Helen Mirren? Oh, no, she's British, isn't she? No, I think maybe you just should move to England. <laughs> Wait, what is wrong with me? What no. about this? How about we'll narrow it down? What female comedian do you think would be a good president? Ooh, what about Kathleen Madigan? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. She's like pretty middle of the road, yeah, yeah. She, I think she would like slap a hammer down, get shit straight. I, yeah, no, I, I, she would be, she would be a, a pretty sick yeah. president because 
is there anyone better that than like people who can like keep people in line but do it with a sense of humor yes like that is not me like i am not a person to be in charge but someone who you know i have been in charge for a very long time and i try and do it with like a <laughs> wink and a smile nobody likes to be told what to do no matter how much you're joking they always get their feelings hurt oh yeah so you just got to be like i don't care about your feelings you got to go back to work now I, well, I, I feel like I uh, handle direction pretty well because I would love to not be in charge of that. <laughs> Just tell me what I need to do and that's what I'll do. Because I'm very, like, especially at work, I'm very lazy. But I show up for what I'm told to do. Like, I can do the thing, mm -hmm. you know? I just need to be told to do it. Otherwise, I'm just going right. to cruise, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's the harder part about being in charge is that everybody's always looking to stop working. So you gotta be like, hey, back to work. Yeah, I don't, the part where it gets iffy is like when people are micromanaging, when, mm -hmm. they're, when they're like correcting things that really like, you're like, is that really a correction? I don't know. Yeah. It was pretty funny, uh, cause we were, I was like polishing glasses at work and my manager at the time w was just like, you know, if you do it this way, uh, it. I don't even know how he explained it. I'm like, did you just mansplain polishing a wine glass to me? Was he just trying to be like, look what I can do? I don't know. I, I mean, I get it. My dad used to do that a lot too, where they just have, th they're like, well, here's a better way to do it. There's where it's like, you're not necessarily doing it wrong, but they're like, but do it this way instead, just because I want to correct you for the... Yeah, that's tough. If you want someone to do something then it should be like standard practice for everybody to do it that way but to just pop by and be like julia let me show you how to polish some glass <laughs> like shut up dude like no lie though i i definitely have like use those tips someone like wh when someone taught me how to wrap a cord yeah where they're like do it around your elbow and your hand that was definitely where i was like wrapping a cord and it you know it worked the way i did it it's mm -hmm. not as that you know what, what is the saying? There's so many ways to string a cat. What is skin a cat? <laughs> yeah, string a cat. <laughs> yeah. You can string a cat. But uh, I, uh, but yeah, I will forever wrap cords with my... Yeah, except mic yeah. cords. Yeah, not your cords. No, no, but like any microphone cords, you don't want to do over the shoulder. Oh. I learned that uh, from over the elbow. an audio guy. No, Wait, it's, why? It's an inside-outside wrap because it... Uh, twist the cable inside oh yeah now i'm mansplaining cord wrapping <laughs> now i feel like everything i did is gonna be a mansplain was he also into sailboats <laughs> yeah it was an audio guy on a sailboat wait for real no oh okay <laughs> i was just doing some improv yes and right there <laughs> i saw i looked at your imdb today it looked like you were in a short film i've been in a few but probably one where i i had imdb credit yeah yeah. So it sounds like, from what you're describing, that you would be a great actor. I like studied direction. acting. Yeah? Yeah, I studied acting after uh, high school. Are you pursuing acting now? Nah. Yes, no, yeah, sure. I don't know. Um, I prefer stand-up. I feel more in control, I guess, of being able to do. Because I can do it every night if yeah. I wanted. Whereas, like, acting, you sort of just go out for auditions and... You know, fingers crossed. I hope right. I get work or something to do. Um, yeah. Also, I was like aud auditioning for short films or like student films that weren't even. P you're just. Yeah, I don't know. That's tough. Uh, and part of that was trying to put together a reel, but then you got to chase them down for the footage, and it's and I don't know. I, pursuing acting is expensive. And yes. I mean, headshots alone are like almost a thousand bucks. Yeah. So it's like anytime I see one of my friends needs new headshots, I'm like, just come over, dude. Like, I'm going to hook you up because that's ridiculous. You can definitely fake it too. You can like, you can get, you can find someone with a nice camera and like find a wall and yeah, do the lighting. YouTube, YouTube tutorial it. I mean, <laughs> you could do it on your phone if you really had to. Yeah. I know but, phone cameras are, I, I'm lame though. I have the... I have the shitty camera version of the iPhone 13. Oh, well, don't shoot your new headshots on your phone. <laughs> all right, I have all of these questions right here. This is from a game called Let's Get Deep. Yes. And this is the deep section. This is the deep end. The deep end of Let's so, Get Deep. I was only gonna pull like five, but I pulled like 20. 
Oh, okay. So pick a card. I'll read it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just see what happens. This one right here. Okay. From the game, let's get deep. From the deep section, this says, what is something now considered outdated that you wish would come back? Oh. Uh, ooh. Because a lot of kids are wearing like 90s clothes right yeah. now. Or is that anything retro that you think is cool? Uh, Style-wise or... Anything. Probably RuneScape. Oh, okay. What's that? <laughs> the, Should I know what that is? It's like, Does everybody know that? <laughs> no, it's a video game online uh, that I used to be obsessed with. And What year are we talking? We're talking probably 2000. What year was I in like fifth and sixth grade? I don't know how old you are, so <laughs> I can't do that math. Uh, oh, I think I know roughly how old you are. 2005? Okay, 05. And was it a new game in 05? It kind of, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's sort of similar to World of Warcraft, but like it was less expensive. Like it wasn't as... Um, World of Warcraft was an elevated sort of version of it. This okay. was an online multiplayer game. You could play for free or you could buy a membership. Mm. Um, and for those of us whose parents wouldn't pay the $15 a month for World of Warcraft, that's what we played. But it's $15 a month for but Warcraft? It is, but it is kind of weird in the MySpace sense where I yeah. was just like randomly talking to 21, 22 year old dudes mm -hmm. online when I was like 11 or 12. And yeah. they, I had so many, so many older boyfriends on the internet. <laughs> right? But it was fun. Dude, in the 90s, the only thing to do on AOL was to just get in a chat room. Yeah. And it's all kinds of folks. It's eight year olds, it's 50 year olds. It's like, and then you would do ASL, like age, sex, location, right? And then everybody would type it in, and then you'd find someone that's near you or somebody that you wanted to talk to. And it's like, you could pretend to be anybody. It's crazy because I always wonder how, like, people end up in, I don't know, where are teenagers? I feel like I haven't even, like, met a teenager in a long time. I don't know any. Does that make sense? I don't know any like younger people. I know very young kids because mm -hmm. of family and friends that have had children. And uh, and then I live in LA. There's not, there's just like not a ton of. Where would you be meeting these teenagers at? Do you want to meet well, teenagers? Well, no, I definitely don't. But what's strange to me is I remember being a teenager and knowing like, some 30 year old dude <laughs> right <laughs> some 22 <laughs> some 30 year old dude i remember yeah. being like fully in high school i'm like i i have in, in my mid to like now i i don't know where they are <laughs> I yeah. just, you have to literally be hanging out by high schools to find them well, there was always we always kept a 30 year old around to buy beer yeah, no. So at all of our parties, there'd just be one real drunk thirty-year-old dude, and we're like, "We need a beer run, Randy." This is so weird. Yeah, ours I, fell off like a ten-foot uh, porch one time, and he was peeing out. off the porch, and he just went over. Oh, and like peed all over himself, and got right back up. And was like, "It's beer run time. Let's go." <laughs> then he Imagine smoked in my car. being that guy. What do you think? What do you think he thinks of himself now? I mean, back then it was normal. It was, I, I grew up in North Carolina, so yeah. it was just like small town oh there's just not a lot of people yeah like everybody wants to get out of that town as soon as they graduate high school everybody goes to like colleges in different states yeah and then two years later they're all back at the local college like living with their parents so i can see That's like sad. one or two guys not making it out and they're like yeah man everybody thinks i'm cool i'll buy beer for the high school kids <laughs> that would be me if i stayed if i stayed in north carolina i'd be like the yeah. dude buying beer for people all right right on yeah just paying it forward you know someone's got to do it that's right yeah i i really i guess i never considered that because i definitely had access to alcohol as a teenager never thought about probably never even paid for it never really chipped in for a bottle of pop off <laughs> <But>. <laughs> well you shouldn't have to i think that's the boy's responsibility not to bring oh, really? back traditional gender roles but i think if you're gonna throw a party somebody some some rich kid should yeah. pay for the keg and then everybody should chip in two bucks for a cup yeah okay. it's probably five or eight dollars for a cup now but that's how we used to do it. Makes sense. I don't know about gender roles. I don't know where these where these dudes are who are 
paying for things, but not in LA. <laughs> it's expensive here. I feel like everyone's struggling, and it is a little bit weird where you're seeing someone who makes as much as you, maybe less, and you know how I don't know. I don't love it. Like it's not the most. I don't know if that's conditioning, but it does affect affect like attraction. How like much I, money a guy has? No, not even how much a guy, a money a guy has. But when he doesn't, you know, uh, put forth the effort of like pursuing. Right. Which I don't, I, you know, like I believe in equality. So I'm not going to like hold someone to that standard or have that expectation. But I will say I do kind of just lose the uh, the, the allure kind of. Yeah. And I think that should happen on both sides, right? It doesn't take money to pursue someone. You can right. spend time for free. There's a million free things it's to do effort. in Los Angeles. It's just yeah. a, it's you need to see some type of investment, mm-hmm. but people withhold that on both sides. Where mm-hmm. now people just like want to protect themselves. They're always in a state of I can do better or I can do like there's just I got so many options. I don't right. need this, and it's just uh, sad. It's made dating kind of sad. Yeah. They're just less exciting. Like there's not. Yeah, chivalry is kind of dead in Los Angeles. Yeah, because uh, when when I was dating, it was like. Every first date would be like a dinner that I would pay for. And then it would be like, oh, halfway through the dinner, I'd be like, nope. You want to just be like, yeah. I would just call it out. Like, this is probably not a thing. You just want to be friends. And But it got expensive. It was like, you know, it's $200 every time you're going out to dinner. Yeah. It's like, I could only go on like one new date a month or whatever. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be the dude, but I would probably like want to be. I would just go on less dates and... Uh, the problem is when you find someone that you like. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, this is going to be expensive for a <laughs> long time. No, but I it even so, I think just in the beginning periods, it, it may be like depending on, ah, dang, I, yeah, I don't think it's sustainable to always be, unless you're like hella rich, to always <sighs> be paying for her. I don't think I've ever been in a relationship where I expected it constantly, but. I have, I mean, my relationship before the one I'm in now, well, I paid for everything, which, and she made way more money than me, but it was just like, this is the cost of doing business. <laughs> and then now we split everything all the time. And okay. I hate it, absolutely hate it. Really? Yeah, it's just like, like if I'm on her side of town, she pays, if she's on my side of town, I pay. Oh, so okay. that's kind of balances out. We do every other weekend when I'm not on the road. Like we do every other weekend. Her place, my place. So, but when I'm at her place and like she pulls her credit card out, I'm like, oh, I just I feel like less of a dude. Like, I know that feels weird. It's maybe that's what it is. It's not that I'm like, I, I feel bad about like paying for myself or splitting the bill. It's just that I can set, I just feel this sense of being like judged or, yeah. and I've heard it too. Mm-hmm. Where uh, I've I've been like either roasted for paying a gu- for a guy or mm-hmm. like splitting the bill, um, and and also I work in the service industry. I've been the server for a lot of a lot of these dates, and I've been I've been dating dudes who just kind of we split everything. But then I'm like waiting on people who the chicks just getting paid for nice dinners, and I'm kind of like, Dang. yeah. Well, there's plenty of dudes with money in this town. I know. They just also... I've met them, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've definitely been taken to nice places. Uh, I don't know what the, what's right and wrong. It's all probably the same. We're all just trying Whatever to find the richest dude. Whatever works for you, yeah. yeah. If I found a super rich dude, I'd marry him. Yeah, I think. well, I think relationships themselves are individual. And whatever w- works for that dynamic mm-hmm. is f- perfectly valid. Yeah. Like, I, I hate going to dinner with... Well, I love going to dinner with my friends, but like big groups of people where it's like couple, 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 couple. I hate the whole like, oh, let's split the check them two and them two. I just hate that whole process. Yeah. So I just want to get to the point where like I'm successful enough to be like, I got this, dude. I don't want to hear about the check. I'm just going to just give them my credit card. I don't want to deal with it. I want yeah. somebody else to go do it. But like I've seen like uber successful comedians just pay for everything all the time. That was, see, I had a dad like that where it wasn't even something I noticed that much, but like whenever we would go out to dinner with people or like groups of people, it was always my dad who was paying, Mm -hmm. which probably affected how I sort of see, uh, you know, romantic pursuits and times have changed, which 
everyone is aware of that like even even my dad like not a big apology guy uh but apologized for one thing and it he was like i'm sorry for the state of the world that i'm leaving you in oh wow yeah yeah where did you grow up orange county oh that's not too far no i'm kind of local yeah <laughs> yeah dude i'm local yeah so do you think things are changing everywhere or just here in new york like i think Hmm. The middle of America, they're all still on Facebook. Most of them don't even have Instagram. Well, you would know better than me because I stay fairly coastal. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think, I mean, unless you're planning on moving to the middle of the country, it's like yeah. you do have to adapt to the surroundings that you're in. But that doesn't mean like if you grew up expecting a guy to pay for dinner, then you should hold yourself to that same standard, right? Like, Right. There's nothing oh. wrong with that if you're like, oh, no, you're, you got this. Like, yeah. No, I just like don't really have that. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just like maybe too much empathy, but like I think women who do that, where they like they reach for their por- purse and pull out their lip go- gloss when the bill comes, I mm-hmm. think that's badass, and I fucking support it. I just like um don't I'm like want to be able to advocate for myself in that way, but I'm I'm whipped. I'm lame. I'm lame. Sauce. I don't think it's lame at all. I I want to be the guy that can do to that like can take someone out to, like I, I and I think it's okay to like want someone who at least has enough aspiration to like also want to be the dude yeah so it's okay if you're still like not at your goal yet but like <laughs> maybe not go to Mastro's maybe go to like somewhere right. else like go where you can provide I that that is the way I think to do it because I don't have expectations of like being brought to fancy places I'm I just like some level of creativity Mm -hmm. and uh, to being able to shut my mind off. But when I like feel for somebody, like when I'm like excited about somebody, I'm super creative. And like, I think a lot of guys and their experience might be different from like what I know, because I don't know, I'm, I'm not out dating like a bunch of women, but I have dated women and they're like, they're creative and provide and have ideas and make they make dating fun whereas like dating men it's just it's so lazy now yeah where it's it's just it's just so much of like well what do you want to do and i feel like i have to i i'm just like i'm off dating apps i haven't been dating because it is a lot of like brain power and you're you're trying to like meet up with somebody someone's like you want to hang and i'm like yeah sure they're like what do you want to (laughs) do i'm like fucking I'd not hang anymore. <laughs> right. I want to delete this and never get back yeah. on it ever again. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I hadn't really thought about how much um, a little effort goes a long way. Because I, I hate making decisions also. Mm-hmm. So and for me, it's like if I offer my partner the opportunity to choose, like, hey, we'll do anything you want to do as long as you pick it. Like, you pick it, I pay. That was my yeah. deal for a very long time. It's just like, because the last person I dated before what I'm in now she was a foodie so she knew all the restaurants we never ate at the same restaurant twice oh okay. so i never had to go like oh and she would love getting reservations she had places to yeah be excited about. she had a list because she like she got all these mailing lists and she was like oh here's a new restaurant to try this month it's like great we're going there 7 30 cool and she drove yeah like, awesome i don't have to pick i think i i think it, that's a good way to go about it where like maybe what would be a good way to nurture a relationship is sharing your in your interest with your partner so like let's say i'm dating a foodie right Mm -hmm. i think them being like i want to go to this restaurant and uh that that can be their contribution i really love going to shows and like going dancing and then that could be my contribution and that works it can be like you pick you pay but you could also just like like something i do is if i want to see something if i want to go to a movie or if I want to go to a show, I'll just like go ahead and buy those tickets and Mm. that will be a contribution. And then maybe we'll get dinner beforehand and they'll like pay for dinner, you know? Yeah, there's a way to split it up. Yeah. Without physically splitting a check, (laughs) which is super weird. That, yeah, putting both cards down. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. The switching off is a good way to do it too. Yeah, I just still hate it. I mean the 50, it's just so, the fifth, the problem is, is like the having that perspective where it's just like we should split the effort because then mm. it's never gonna be even. 
both people should just go above and beyond in yeah. the way that they can and put put in pour more of themselves into it not see it as like i'm gonna do half of this but see this as i'm gonna do what i can for this exactly yeah it should be like 110 percent effort even if you're not paying like I I'm say excited. eighty. I think eighty. <laughs> well, I don't know. You gotta take some days off. Well, you're you have you have a successful like relationship right now. You know. Yeah, so it, it is currently successful. It's currently <laughs> successful. I don't, uh, but I just like I like as much as my life has been. Because growing up, I always thought I was so romantic about love, and I thought that it would be a much bigger part of my life than it ended up being. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, because all of my friends met their person in their 20s. Dang. And they are like, nobody's gotten divorced. Everybody's like linked up, perfect people. I'm the last of my six very best friends. Wow. And it's been decades. So it's like. It's okay. tough. You think it's like, you're like, is it me? I don't know. Yeah. Well, they also wanted to like leave LA, have children, buy a house. Like They all had different goals. Like, And I never left the whole like. I want to be an entertainer before it was music now it's comedy like so I kind of held on to my dream well, our lifestyle that. makes dating very hard like mm -hmm. on top of working nights uh, I also do stand up and usually that is you most people work during the day and then their nights are what's free and they want to just like wind down and relax the problem is is like when I'm seeing someone uh, I'm taking nights off what I want to be doing outside of that yep. to sit on the couch and watch TV, which has been like a consistent thing in dating for me where I'm just like, it's tough for me to want to keep doing this because I feel like I'm pulling away from myself mm -hmm. and like making a lot of like compromises to sit on the couch and watch TV, Yeah, you know? And I get that they like have a busy day and that's just, they want to wind down with the, their person. But like my wind down time is usually like, the morning to afternoon yeah so it's the same like so my lady's on a tv show she does costumes oh, so cool. she's off on the weekends but i'm out of town on the weekends so the weekends that i'm not out of town i i just give myself sundays like sundays is my off day but i don't think you need a two-day weekend like i have a career to build and mm -hmm. it's not i'm old so i gotta get it faster than everybody else because i'm catching up i don't have a lot of time left before i die because I have cancer, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so it, it is tough to, to like go over there on a Friday and go, I'm here till Sunday night and just go like, because I would normally like stay home working and editing and doing stuff on a Friday night or go to a show and then all day Saturday and then Sunday we're laying on the couch watching TV. It's like, okay, I got stuff to do. I got to go home, work till midnight. It's just, it's that balance, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, and then, you know, when I'm on the road, she's like, what are you doing out there? I'm like, Okay, I'm yeah. gonna show you exact. I'm gonna send you a picture every ten minutes. <laughs> I was just talking about this with Justin Foster because we room together on the road. We share a room. There's just not time or the people that you would think you would want to hook up with, like on the road. It's like, and then where are you gonna go? Hey, this is my friend Justin. Don't worry about him. It's so I've been. Uh, I've been in. That's part of what's difficult is I've like been in relationships where that is a big thing where you going out and like doing things without them is like a threat to the relationship but like yo that's out of it's just out of your control yeah like and and spending a lot of mental space and energy on like let people show you who they are I guess they if will. that makes sense 100%. and they will It'll, yeah. and especially if you just like if you just hang back and observe and at, like they'll show you who they are someone who's loyal and gonna show up for you is just gonna do that without yep. you having to police them it um, always takes about a month for but somebody I get to, it. yeah because i feel the insecurities i know mm -hmm. but just like don't touch it let them show you <laughs> yeah people will always be their best version of themselves for about a month mm -hmm. sometimes too if they're really good at it but then everybody lets their guard down eventually and you're like ah oh, yeah see I see your insecurities but like yeah i uh, I, I, I had I had like boyfriends who would essentially basically like not want me to go out unless uh, it was with them, especially if it was in a club environment, which I like going to shows with friends and like music shows, music shows. Yeah. Yeah. Or like theater or like comedy. Uh, obviously, like I'm at comedy all the time, but music mostly 
and but I, I i don't know like that's something i would love to do with a person it's just like you should be able to do these things on your own what happens is someone expresses their insecurity about it or like they guilt trip you into like not doing it or finding a way to sort of like and and there are ways to i think it's good to be reassuring mm-hmm. but like letting them kind of have that control then that person is just going to feel like they're with someone controlling and immediately like you trying to uh, make someone behave to reassure your insecurities Mm -hmm. it will turn back on you and make you the bad guy which you don't want because right i've been trying to navigate like how how to express when i'm feeling insecure without looking less than right so um if something's making me feel uncomfortable in an interaction with my lady and another guy in the moment i'm not gonna be like hey that makes me feel weird when you talk to other guys it's just like i wait till later and i'm like hey in this scenario like we were both sitting at a bar and you talked to a guy on your right and i was left to sit by myself for 10 minutes and i know that you like to talk to people all the time it's totally cool i just want you to be more aware of like we came together yeah because you know i was dating somebody who was like super outgoing talks to everybody it's like whoever, wherever the attention's coming from is where her focus is gonna go so it was hard for me to like go hey i don't want to sit at this bar by myself but i also didn't want to be like bitch like you have to communicate it but, yeah but but i think doing it that way is better than like trying to avoid that scenario because yeah. then i think it's just you follow up and then you can express you can express how like that wasn't cool because the truth is, is she probably just wasn't aware. Right. right? She didn't do she was, anything wrong. Needed, it, yeah, she didn't do anything technically wrong. She just needed something to be brought to her attention. Yeah. Which is a good way to do it. And that's good communication. Like yeah. I've dated people who like would also, they would just like let things kind of happen that made them feel badly and then hold on to it for months and months to the point where I've like long forgotten that anything like that happened and then they would bring it up and i don't and i'd be blindsided i'd be like i didn't realize right i i don't know what happened but but it's just like yeah i, I follow up with it and bring it to their attention it's probably just a general unawareness yeah if somebody brings something up to me that i didn't know i was or wasn't doing then now i know so like after spending a week off the road together monday tuesday wednesday i wouldn't text her very often maybe once or twice a day no phone calls Cause I'm like catching up with work. I'm working from time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, trying to do my hustle. And then she brought it up on like a Wednesday. I just heard, I called her and I was, sh- I was shooting at the, uh, the improv. And it was a late show. It was like the show started at nine 30. She goes to bed early cause she got to get before all this shit. And I'm like, Hey, what's wrong? She's like, I don't want to talk to you about it while you're at work. I'm like, no, no, just hit me. And she's like, well, we haven't talked a lot this week. And I'm like, Oh, I, I just thought since we spent all weekend together, couple days catching up work 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 see you this weekend she's like no that's not how this is gonna go down like i want to hear from you more and i was like oh no problem so i just started texting her when i wake up yeah hit her around lunch call her every night like she wanted more communication and i i was like okay no bet let's do this but in the past people have handled it differently and they start shutting down they don't tell you what's wrong and then you're trying to guess and then you can feel the distance and then inevitably right off the cliff it's a breakup so I think, yeah, I, I'm a fan of over-communication. Uh, or maybe, I don't know what I'm a fan of. Um, <laughs> hasn't worked out so far. I But, like, I have dated really cool people who bring things to my attention. I love phone calls. Mm-hmm. So if I get a phone call, I'll usually answer it or, like, follow up. And But I, I hate texting. I'm not a very good texter. But I'll be seeing someone, and they want to, like, text throughout the day, and I'm, like, struggling with it. So I bring it to their time. I'm like, I really don't like texting if you give me a call that way we can like spend that time on that call together and then like focus on other things outside of that um and they're like but like they're just like is it cool that i like want to talk to you and i'm like i don't know why texting just feels like it takes so much of my energy during the day it does especially because it's so hard to not respond right away yeah if i'm in the middle of something and somebody texts me i'm like oh i gotta i gotta get to that and now i have not now but i've always have texting on my laptop so i'll be editing it's like ding right in your face i gotta turn that off when i'm working but i just got to the point where i was like just because you texted me right now does not mean i have to text you back yeah right now so now i'm just like but then you forget and then it (laughs) no i just i leave them unread so they're still on there because i have to have not with my email i'm not a zero inbox 
But with texts or DMs, if there is a number in the little square on the app, it okay. drives me nuts. So I'll respond to all, like when we're done with this podcast, I'll respond to, you got zero? No, the I have 245 unread text messages. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the most I've ever seen for texts. Uh, I mean, how a do lot you of them sort are... through all that? I don't. That's why it gets to be such a big number, is because I just f keep keep it moving. So, have you just stopped talking to people because you just didn't well, want to respond to a text? A lot, a lot of them. I need to just like clean it up because mm -hmm. a lot of them are just uh, what your Uber's arriving or something. Mm -hmm. You text like that, um, but some of them are people that I guess <laughs> some of them are people <laughs> don't currently I, okay <laughs> let's do another one of these yeah sorry no it's all good I get so distracted um pick a card any card uh I kind of want that one all right here we go uh this is do from I pick one for you oh you can okay cool let's do that next yeah this is from the let's get deep friends edition from the deep pile if you could travel back in time, what time period would you like to explore and why? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, well, that changes throughout your life, right? Mm -hmm. What t time period would I like to explore? I'm assuming it's you at your current age going. It's back not like I don't want to be 15 and go back to being 15. Right. I think it's you now going to another time period. Yeah, I, that that's kind of what I thought. But the other one would be maybe deeper. Like, at what point right. in your life do you... And it's just like, I want to skip to 75. Oh, no. uh, mm -mm. <laughs> Well, if you could come back. Like, if you could skip to 75, know what you know, and then bring it back to now, and then you know how it's all going to work out. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Um, I... Uh, what would... I saw, a, like, a video online of a woman talking about, like, asking women that question because life was a lot different at different time periods for us yeah where i'm like it is nice that i i don't know but i feel like the the gatsby time flapper era the 30s and 40s but it sounds so like glamorous yeah yeah if you have money uh that's true Ooh. We, i don't think anybody would want to go back to any era where they're poor uh, yeah. Like being rich in almost any era would be Hopefully, cool to see how the rich do it. Yeah, as long as I'm rich any any time. I don't know. Like if you were Gatsby, that would be great. But if you worked for Gatsby, it'd be a whole lot different. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, like a house cleaning person. house. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'd just be attending the parties. Yeah. That's that's the idea. Or I would just go, I would go in the future. I'm curious. I'm curious to see if this planet is still around. I know that the environmental scientists are chaining themselves to things <laughs> and yeah. it's it's looking grim and I I'm I'm way more curious whereas like I can like read books and things from previous time which I do. Yeah. But so and, you can almost you can travel get, back in time you anyway. You can get a glimpse. Yeah. Um I don't really want to like visit the plague, you know. I maybe <laughs> be so funny. It's like I, I lived through my own pandy, and now I'm going back a hundred years. To, I do kind of want to visit Doomsday. I want to see what that oh, looks like. See what the last I'll, day looks like. Yeah, I want to see how that pans out. Yeah, how it's, far away do you think that is? I know that's that's what I'm wondering. Could be today. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Fallout? No, not yet. Watch the very first episode of Fallout. Oh, okay. It's a different because I didn't. Oh, never mind. That's Fall it's on Guys. Amazon. Okay. Fallout. Yeah, Fall Guy is handsome dudes doing stunts. Right. Fallout <laughs> is a video game movie. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's a television show. That sounds show. cool. Yeah. But the very first episode, it's like modern 60s. Like, what if the 60s happened with, like, modern technology? Yeah. And then... I just rewatched Wally. wall -E. That's a weird one that it doesn't is. come up a lot. That and Lilo and Stitch. Those two Disney movies, I, you would think more people would be rewatching, but aren't. Well, I think it's... The, the thing about um, wall -E is when they're all sitting in the chairs. Yeah, I know. And you're like... That's coming soon, dude. Because everything is so accessible. That's sort of the like hang up I have about dating and texting is I think that because a lot of this insecurity fueling dating doesn't necessarily, I don't think it was always a thing. I think it's a thing because people are accessible constantly now. So mm -hmm. now the standards are just like through the roof of like what you can expect from your partner mm -hmm. and you're gonna want it all but it's also so little effort 
So people obviously are like, well, if you don't, I don't see why you can't send me a text back like immediately because it just takes like two seconds. Um, but that's just small that, mentality. Like you don't need that energy, right? From anybody, like guy or girl, you don't need anybody who's like, I want to be able to control you at any point from wherever mm-hmm. I'm at. But if you think about the way things used to be without phones and people being accessible all the time, then you had someone simply like putting in effort to show up because it was like more of a challenge and and you would just like i feel like there would be more appreciation and excitement yeah um i think the the apps are kind of destroying everything's just fed to us yeah because it's like well if this doesn't work out i'll just get back on the app Mm -hmm. and i'll swipe until someone else wants to see what's up it's like that whole mentality is i don't know i like meeting people in real life yeah um i sometimes i wonder if i would still be a virgin if it weren't for the apps though okay well the story there (laughs) no i a lot a lot of my dating experience and romantic life is because of the apps and i'm off of them now Mm -hmm. and i think in the beginning it was a really good thing because you got to see so many more people and really kind of like decide what you like rather than just be like this person's here i guess right but now that just escalated into being problematic if that makes sense yeah totally yeah i think that it, it's true when they say like friends make the best sp- like partners so like just getting to know somebody like with absolutely not like the first date thing on an app right it's like i've never met you you never met me we're eating it's weird i'm trying to be my best self i don't know who you are yet you're trying to be your best self but if you just meet someone in a group setting and you're like oh that's a friend of my friend steve and like i like his name's bob and i like him a lot and then the group hangs out and then that friendship grows and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we start hanging out alone. Like that, I love that progression. I agree. And and what's nice is you get to know somebody without having like insanely high expectations for them right off the bat. Yeah. Like you could just kind of get to learn who they are mm-hmm. um, in a friendship dynamic. So it doesn't get all weird and complicated with like the, here's what I expect from someone I date. Instead, you get to start as friends mm-hmm. and then yeah, no, I mean, I've definitely, like, I feel sort of taken aback when I start seeing someone, how quickly it escalates into, you got to be like hanging out a few times a week, talking all the time. And that is something I would want from like my partner. It's just crazy that you just meet this stranger and right away, that's that's how it is. Right, you can't ease into it. <laughs> yeah. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, we're going to hang out twice this week. And you see a lot on social media of like, because I am on girly TikTok. I want to be there forever. I freaking love it. I love the tea. I love the drama. Is that different and than I'm regular gonna TikTok? And I'm going to listen. I don't know. But it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of like amazing, silly young women, but like talking about their dating experience. But I do realize that we do have some like, crazy expectations from a person we're meeting for the first time Mm -hmm. where we're like here's this shitty date i went on um i like i don't really like dinner on a first date not that i i'm sure any type of first date could be fun depends Mm -hmm. if you connect with a person but i love just committing to like a cup of coffee whereas like some people would be like that's not enough investment in a first date i'm like what do you mean why are you investing right a whole meal in a first date yeah that's true it's this weird balance for, in my head too, because it's like, you want to impress this person, so dinner seems impressive. Mm-hmm. Like if I show you that I want to spend time with you, but I also take you to a nice place where we spend two hours having a nice meal, and there's five courses and there's fancy shit and I put on a clean shirt, like that to me shows effort. Yes. Because I, I don't know, I hear about, I've never done it, but I hear about these guys that are like, yeah, you want to be for coffee? It's like, right. what are we doing in the middle of the afternoon just having a cup of coffee? Yeah. Without microphones. Who's well, going to, if you don't broadcast it, does it count? But I guess the difference between like what you're saying and what I'm saying is that you, you like to meet people. And I also would love to meet people in person. I think I like more in, introverted guys. But the thing is, is I'm sort of introverted in that way. I'm not really putting myself out there to be like, so the type of guys that pursue me, because I'm not really like doing a lot of going after, uh, are going to be more extroverted whereas like i think i just connect better with a guy who can shh sh- let me do the talking <laughs> <laughs> okay no no i'm kidding so then do you put yourself in scenarios where you meet introverted guys like do you go to book clubs and that's probably a good idea the scenario where i meet introverted guys unfortunately is on the apps but 
the problem with that is is a lot of times they might be introverted but they're also uh lazy (laughs) oh do do you think those are synonymous like do you think no i don't think i don't think i think that like a lot of people who are on the apps or you meet on the apps there's a good chance that they're very lazy and that's why they like meeting people off that because they don't want to put in yeah um but you can get anything you can get a mix of whatever off of those i just tend to like uh introverted guys and so since they don't get it but there's a possibility that that guy will also be lazy so does introverted mean quiet yeah it's not even i i it's not even that i want someone who doesn't talk a lot i ramble a lot but i find it very like i'm tired i got a lot going on in my day-to-day life and i think that it's a lot when you end up trying to like chill with someone who is just like yapping the whole time Mm -hmm. um i broke up with a girl because she didn't talk enough and then my next one talked way too much (laughs) and i missed the one that was quiet yeah because you know, the grass is always greener it's always like and but that's the thing like we the purpose of dating is to find what you like and don't like in some people so that when you find somebody that's got at least 80 percent of what you want mm-hmm. then you're like oh i can deal with this yeah i i i kind of like i like quieter people because it's fun when they get comfortable with you and yeah. then they actually get like riled up and excited and then it's not like a side of them that like everyone sees um i just like people with like more of a stoic energy because I feel really overstimulated in social situations where I can only take so much of them. Mm -hmm. So when I'm supposed to just be like having alone time with someone and they're very social, it's, yeah. So you you want an autistic fellow? Yeah, I have. I've dated my fair share of of guys on the spectrum. Amy Schumer and Eliza Schlesinger, both married autistic chefs. Oh, really? I do like the idea of being fed good food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be awesome. And I do. I have. I've liked it. I like I like guys who are a little got a little of the tizzy. <laughs> yeah. They're just focused on making you food. Yeah. <laughs> do you date at, wor- at work? Like in the restaurant business no. that I've worked in, it always seems like everybody's just like dating inside the restaurant. Yeah, it is really common. And I've been surrounded by it. It's it's a big thing in comedy i have dated comedians but restaurant work no not really i never ended up dating someone for a consistent period of time i've like gone out with some a coworker when you first start somewhere and you're like oh he's cute and then you see him outside of the restaurant and then i don't know they don't look good without that white jacket on (laughs) no it's not (laughs) i don't even know (laughs) It, it it's it's because like that they were what's around i guess and so you're i don't know I, I also like didn't really I don't really like a lot of drama. I even yeah. I've I've even gotten burnt out experiencing that a lot in comedy. There's so much of it. If you want it, there's plenty of it. I know. I feel and there's so many dude comedians who I get like hit up by. There's so many of them. They're, you want to write? You want to write? You want to write? <laughs> well, that only happened when I was like a newer comedian, and it's nice that it let up once I've been around longer. But yeah i don't there's yeah there's an unlimited supply of drama in the comedy scene Mm -hmm. but you can just also just choose to be like you guys talk about it all you want to i'll just be over here well and then yeah so you date a comedian and things don't work out as most things don't Mm -hmm. and then but like people talk about it and it's your peers it's the people you're around and I've, I've I've walked in on a set before of a comedian literally naming me by name. Oh, and so on stage? On stage. That's messed up. The main stage of the comedy store. The main stage <laughs> of the comedy store. Someone's dropping your name. Someone, na- which is funny because like it was late night, but, but dropping my name, saying I'm a comedian and then dropping my first name isn't for the audience. That's just for the comedians like in the back of the room. Yeah. Um, but, and it's, I like no hard feelings. I get like the joke and what, but, (laughs) but I don't know. It's tough. Like then now everyone, all your peers know like your personal life and and I'm guilty of it. I've done, I do a lot of yapping. I need to shut up. I need to ask you a question. Okay. (laughs) Choose one. Uh, Let's do this one. How are these deep though? I don't know. 
That's what the box says. These aren't deep at all. It's not. Yeah. These are. Oh, well, it's Friends edition, maybe. Yeah, but the ones like the, I'll read you one in a second where it's yeah. just like the, this is the deepest level in that box. But this will be, I guess, like an okay question for you just because you've been touring. But which U.S. city has the best food? Oh. Portland has really great breakfast. Ooh. Um, man. Breakfast food. That's what we do. We're like, we're brunch folks. Yeah. My headliner loves brunch. Like we have brunch every day that we're on the road. I have brunch for dinner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Portland just had this like soul food. It was in a house. Like you walk in through the screen door. The plates were enormous. Oh, a breakfast um, sandwich sounds so But generally Vegas to me has the best food on the planet. And the best service. Yeah. Uh, I went to Vegas with my sister and brother-in-law and just the the food industry there is. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge Vegas dude. I like going yeah. to Vegas. It's like my favorite like first weekend out of town with a person. It's like, let's go to Vegas. I wanna see if you can hang, but it's expansive. And those sugary drinks. Yeah. Honestly, I realize that it is the sugar and alcohol that, that gives me a hangover. I kind yeah. of am hungover today. I thought, I thought you would be. <laughs> and I feel bad because I really should bring the energy. You're all but, good. But I'm also just like a mellow person, which is part mm -hmm. of why I felt like podcasting maybe wouldn't be, I would, if I did a podcast, I would need a, a co-host that was a kick in the balls. Like they were just a, on it. Ball of energy. Because I'm very mellow, but mm -hmm. ADHD, so I interrupt a lot and I You'd just be need, a good third I need, chair. I need to. Like, like two people that are just like boo, 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 boo. And then every once in a while you're like, bam. Yeah. 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 Third chair is the most underrated. I agree. Yeah. And I don't think everybody needs a podcast. I think we need people as guests, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get just as much clips going as a guest on all of our shows as you can. And use that. Yeah. yeah. If I didn't have a podcast, I would be a professional guest. I and I prefer stand up over podcasting. So when I was like really invested in the podcasting and it was detracting from stand up, that was just like a, a little bit of like, oh, uh, as much as I love podcasts, part of the reason I started one was because of the pandemic and I needed something to supplement comedy. Mm -hmm. But I like writing and I depend heavily. I'm not I'm not a funny person, you know, but I have no, you're like, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> That is, it's funny because people, when they hear I'm a comedian, because I, I do not, I, mean, I do not give off comic vibes. When you mean, I mean yeah. that would be no one's guess. But, uh, but people are like, oh, you, you started comedy. You thought you were funny, and I was like, no, I just wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, everybody in my neighborhood is funnier than me, so I hate talking about it. And they bring it up all the time. They're like, you're not funny. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm not funny here. Yeah. But like you try and do these little one-liners at the bar in front of 500 people or a thousand people. I've seen so many people who are funny people just eat fucking shit on stage. But also mm -hmm. because comedy, I think actually people like you and me tend to have that advantage where we start this knowing that at some level we're going to we're going to eat it. We're going to eat it. It's going to stink, but we're going to figure it out versus someone who's funny and gets that validation in person and then try stand up and fucking like eats it they're gonna quit right away because their yeah. expectation for how it was gonna be is so much different than ours yeah they don't think they don't write they're like i'm just gonna get up there and ham it up and then yeah. you're like 30 seconds in you're out of words uh -huh. good luck <laughs> uh i had a friend who did uh there was like a mic after a show i did and a bunch of my like old co-workers came through and uh, and and supported me, which was amazing because I didn't ask anyone. They just saw a post and showed up, and I was like, really, I was nervous. I was terrified. I was like, these are people I know. Um, and then it works out really well. And then I understood bringer shows and the concept of them. <laughs> right? <better>. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, actually, you kind of crush uh, for the people who care about you. But at the end, there was a mic, and one of my one of my friends was like, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do stand up. Got up and uh, and got off stage and decided to get sober. <laughs> oh my god! Like yeah. never drink again. <laughs> like nothing. Like nothing. Yeah. So I think that he didn't have a plan. He just was like, "I'm gonna go up there and wing it." Yeah. But he was on like Adderall and cocaine, a and so help. there was just like a lot of like stress and like anxiety, and it was a lot of things. And then he had a come to Jesus moment, and has been sober since. And I think that's awesome. I just think 
that it's hilarious that trying stand-up comedy for the first time was that awakening yeah my, my uh we were at a bar my first time we were at a bar and there was an open mic in like the other room of this sports bar and my two buddies just like karaoke they went in the other room they signed me up and they came back and sat down they didn't even tell me and then all, all of a sudden my name gets pulled out of a bucket and i'm like what the what and they're like you're going up right now you've been talking about comedy too long wow so i went up and i told two stories neither of which made sense <laughs> i think i did four minutes out of a five minute deal and then i they both filmed it and i have still never watched it because it's oh, so God. bad one of those stories I've been working on for three or four years, I still can't land it. Like, but I'll you get still it, have it. I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Yeah, but I want to get it now. <laughs> um, how about this? We're we're rounding. We're just over an hour, but I'm probably gonna cut the first like four minutes out because you can cut so much of it out. I will not take it personally. This will be the second lost episode. It's just everything I say gets cut out. Oh, no. I just tricked you into coming and doing podcasts and never putting them out. We should tell people that that you've done this. Did we talk about that at the beginning? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, that I did the podcast, but it's not out there. It's never. It's not out there. It doesn't exist. Maybe I'll put it as bonus Patreon content. Yeah, I don't have a Patreon. Oh, it's, what if I started a Patreon? Just put that one episode on it, and that's it. I think I made a Patreon for my podcast, and like, just didn't. Ah, I su- I was such a piece of shit. I'm not. I need to be productive. Well, this is my come to Jesus moment. This is it. This yeah, is you, this I need is your to like, open mic. I need to just like start doing something. You know, um, so I just recently worked with a performance coach because I want to be a high level operator. Didn't really work, but. <laughs> Um, I was just talking about this with Justin, but if you, it's like the whole thing of like manifest manifestation, right? It, all you got to do is like really kind of like pick what you want and then like find the steps backwards to like fill in the gap. And I, I don't, I don't believe in hustle, hustle culture. I don't believe that you have to get up at 4am and go to the gym till seven and work till midnight every day. I think if you just have a, a couple of hours of focus on your ultimate, like two three and five year goals you're gonna reach them yeah way faster and then you're not gonna have that little ringing in your ear of like oh i, I feel guilty for watching tv right now because i could be writing or i could be at a mic or i could be doing something else it's like oh no i did the things that i'm supposed to do for my goals today and now i'm taking time to live life which is going to give me experiences to write about and i'm more present because i'm not thinking that i should be doing something else yeah i someone gave me advice where uh, like just a post-it wall Mm -hmm. of like writing things that you have to get done like somewhere where you see it and it's just in your face you're more likely to follow up and just like get get it done yeah i just i gave myself the i've the pandemic period for like was brutal and i like i think i like gave myself i excused myself it's funny, I joke that like I I like I I lost my dad and then like lost my cousin and I was like going through it, but uh that I unraveled. I just I was like I lost my shit and I was like I need to learn to code. <laughs> and so I did. I went through like a coding boot camp. Seriously? Yeah. Le- I don't you know. all those people chanting learn to code, you were like, "Okay." Uh, no wow. one was like t- chanting learn to co-. I just like I was like That was the thing on Twitter. For learn to, oh. learn to code was a slang for like go get a job on oh, Twitter. Oh, that's funny. Before Elon bought Maybe it. Maybe I saw it a lot, didn't pay attention to it, but just like absorbed it. Yeah. You know? Just on Twitter all the time, like all these dudes want me to code. <laughs> I yeah, I learned to code. Well, my dad was a software engineer. And Mine too. and oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought it would be like a healthy sort of way to kind of cope is like instead of just feeling sorry for myself i would uh learn something new Mm -hmm. and i i think i support it but i do feel like it's been like a couple years now and i gave myself a lot of excuses on like you just been through a lot but i'm like i really i see my peers doing shit and getting shit and i love it and it's exciting because it's a good sign it means like i mean i love seeing people do well but it has occurred to me that i have been like letting i've been letting myself get in my own way (laughs) but everybody grieves differently and so i lost my father when i was 27 nine months after i moved here wow we lost our dads at the same age 27 Mm -hmm. we're in the 27 club i know and we had a similar first time doing comedy story too yeah 
that's all in the lost episode <laughs> yeah. that no one will ever hear. <laughs> but my way of coping was spending like 11 years drinking every day. So I didn't get anything done for my entire 30s. Oh. Like 20, I broke up my band that I moved here with to get a record deal. And just, I was working in the film business, which afforded me a couple of bucks, but I didn't do anything with it. I didn't save any of it. As soon as I made any money, I took it to Vegas and gave it away. So like, you have to give yourself some grace too. Cause like everybody's grieving period is like, like things are gonna happen when they're supposed to happen. If you wanna make them happen faster, you just put in a little extra work. But like, you can't feel bad about the way that you coped yesterday and you can't decide how you're gonna cope tomorrow. You can just like, I hope this isn't turning into a therapy session. No, but it like, kind of is very therapeutic. Thank yeah. you. It's, yeah. So you're you're gonna achieve what you want in the time that it's meant for you to achieve it. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like you want to speed that up a little bit, if you're ready for more, then you just yeah, self forgiveness is so healthy. It's it's just like I mean I learned a lot through because it, I guess it's like a form of addiction, but mm -hmm. just through like my relationship with food and uh, my laxative abuse. <laughs> you can abuse laxatives? Yeah, I, people never talk about it. I never thought I'm that like, you could just force it out faster or, instead oh, of throwing yeah. it up. Uh, well, cause I couldn't throw up. Didn't have a guy, no. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I first. <laughs> Oh and God. your DMs are flooded now. <laughs> no, I I just like I wasn't very good at making myself yeah. throw so I, I was like, I guess it's gotta go out the other end. And I remember That's fun. <laughs> I remember yeah, I remember stealing laxatives because I was so ashamed to like buy them. I was so ashamed of like what I was doing. But there was a brief period. You go to the store and you get like liquor, condoms, lube, and you're like, I'm stealing these laxatives. <laughs> oh God. Con what do you think about, no, you guess I don't, I'm not around, I'm not around guys who like have this red pill perspective because I'm in LA and then also I just like, I, I don't know if I have the lack of intelligence to be able to give energy to people who have those perspectives. But I saw a TikTok once of this guy um, basically saying, he was like cr grossed out by women who like had their own condoms. That's a tough one. That Where he's is like, a tough just one. like the women who have their, there's something about like, like ugh, about women who have their own condoms. There is an ick to it, but it, in a world where you don't want to be the guy with a condom in your wallet. Oh yeah. Then it's responsible for her to have one. Right. I guess I haven't really thought about that in a while because I've just been in a string of relationships where it's like, you wait long enough to have sex for the first time that it's like, okay, you're yeah. good. I'm good. I'm not out. Like I'm not in my hoe phase anymore. Yeah. I miss those days but that it's like this like if i'm gonna have sex with somebody they're gonna be a partner and i'm gonna be just with them for a long time so i don't know it does still ick me out though if chicks have condoms i'd rather just interesting yeah i mean i'd rather I be in a relationship very... where i don't need them but in a situation where i i would rather just be like i'll be right back and i'll go to the store yeah okay that makes sense well i i was just shocked because i like fully was expecting the comments to pull the, rip this guy apart but it was just like so much agreement but my experience with with like sex and men is for some reason I just like couldn't count on men to be the sexually responsible one. Oh, you, that's Wh which which means like I'm like, well, but I care about my body. Right. But but it's weird cuz like I don't I don't connect condoms with like a like a, that means that somebody has an extensive sex, sex life and they're sleeping with people all the time. But I guess that's what that guy was like implying is that if a, or some people would respond and be yeah. like, oh, especially when like the comments were like, especially when she has them in her like side table. Right. <laughs> Where are they? How many does she have? But if she if has she, a lot, that right. means that maybe. If she has a lot, that's a problem. Do you know, but like I get condoms because uh, like what? You go you go to Planned Parenthood and get checked for a yeast infection. You can leave with condoms. There's free condoms. I have everywhere. never been checked for a yeast infection. And at well, also getting tested. I yeah. have like I do not have a lot of partners because I would rather just like sleep with one person because I feel like Ugh, about random encounters. Mm -hmm. But because of that, I like get tw tested between partners, which means I go, I show up, and I leave usually with condoms. Uh, we're there. 
I have a very specific brand and style I know. that I like. <laughs> so it's like if I need to be prepared, then I just need to make arrangements because mm-hmm. the odds of somebody having the one type that I like is... What is your condom? I'm not saying it on camera. That is because, so funny. I, no, cause, I mean, I, I'll no, say it and I bleep think, it out, but I, I, no, no one believes it I about me anyway. I, I think I have a preference because I'm a whore. No. <laughs> um, I keep I just, 75 wow, condoms I'm in my so bedside. I'm so surprised that guys really, because every guy I've asked, I, we're, they were kind of like, no, yeah, I'm weirded out by chicks who have their own condoms. It's great if they have less than 10 and they're like... But that means they've gone through them. They've used them. No, no. If they, if they're like, this is the number that I keep. Like, I just keep like ten around. Okay. But if you have two hundred, you're planning on using two hundred. That being said, I buy mine on Amazon in a fifty pack. Oh. So I, I don't know when I'm ever gonna go through so fifty f- of them in my whole life. But I just was tired of buying yeah. them in twos and threes. No, I mean, I think they're good to have. I just like anytime I've dudes just like aren't generally prepared no because we don't ever know when we're gonna get laid it's always up to the woman well but that i I feel like i don't even like sleeping with men anymore because of that fact because i just feel like all the onus is on me for like reproductive health like being protected from stds and stis i feel like all that responsibility the expectation falls on me just because I care, but then I feel icked out because I'm like, how are you, how do you not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, to be honest, a guy who had condoms, that would be a good sign for me because I'm like, thank God he's like using protection. A guy who doesn't, I'm like, dude, every encounter you have, you're just like, all right, let's freaking Just raw dogging your way around Los Angeles. Yeah, roulette it. Yeah. (laughs) I've lived both lives. When I was when I was younger and in a band, it was like you're okay. I, yeah, I mean, am I? I, I don't know. I don't I'm all right. Know. Uh, Are you? Know, you? I'm I'm gonna live. I think it's not lethal <laughs> what I have, but you know, sometimes you pick up a party favor that uh, never goes away. All right. Well, yeah. So, but there's treatments for everything. There are. Yeah. Yeah. I well, I mean, and also, I I've, sometimes that happens with like the first person you end up with, and yeah. I don't know. It just is what it is. It's the risk we take, the life we. Yeah, I think it's it's it really is more about communicating like what your reproductive goals are. I mean, who am I? I got scabies. Yeah. Yeah, and I spread it. Stop bragging. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I uh, see. It's funny because like one of my first bits uh, was about getting scabies. It's like a. It's a pirate disease, right? That's scurvy. Okay. But I'm sure pirates <laughs> dealt with their fair share of scabies too. It's 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 technically skin to skin contact that okay. causes it, but it's a little skin parasite. It's not super difficult to treat. It's like mm-hmm. a cream, and uh, it, but they they spread usually from intimate connections, and um, yeah, I and had that's I been had that scabies one. with Julia. What a, yeah, what a weird one. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I we can cut all this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to cut some of it because we're at uh, an hour and 15. I actually have a client coming in. Sorry. Uh, but I want to do one, two, three, four, five, six would you rathers. Oh, sorry. I fucking have been holding this up. No, okay. you're totally fine. Don't okay. feel like you have to rush these, but these are going to be probably the clippy parts. Okay. Well, this is what this is what clips. Fire them off. Okay. This is the tough one. What is that? Oh, underwear. Would you rather not clean your teeth for a month or not change your underwear for a month? Can I shower in the underwear? Oh, good question. So that, I would rather just uh, clean my underwear in the shower for a month. Yeah, because if you don't clean your teeth for a month, you're not going to need to take your underwear off anyway. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. All right, would you rather be a dragon or own a dragon? I would rather own a dragon. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. What do you want to be a dragon for? Yeah. Then you got to go live in a cave. <laughs> you got to own a dragon. Where would you keep it? Ooh, uh, I honestly, I w- that would be something I would have to figure out. Right. Um, I would keep it in... Uh, is In the dungeon under your castle. Is What's-His-Face's Island available? Or did they... Epstein? Epstein. I think Diddy bought it. (laughs) Oh, Diddy bought... Oh, shit. (laughs) Wait. Oh, Diddy is the funniest response ever. (laughs) 
<laughs> Wait, did he act? I'm so gullible. I have no idea. Okay. I, I have heard so many Epstein and Diddy jokes already. I'm, I'm over <laughs> Epstein. I'm over his fucking island. I'm over trans jokes. I'm over Diddy. Oh, I'm sorry for bringing it up. No, no, no. It's fine. But I was just but wondering you know, if like, there was an island available to keep my dragon. There is. Okay. Yeah. It's got a castle on it. Okay, perfect. Oh, how about this? Would you rather read minds or move things with your mind? Uh, ooh, um, move things with my mind. Yeah. I don't want to know what you're thinking. I like, I'm so, I, as a curious person, I love to know what people are thinking. I just know how much people actually like suck and like hate on people for like no fucking reason. Yeah. And Plus moving stuff with your mind. I don't need that. I've seen the mean comments on TikTok. No, thank you. Yeah. I don't want to know what's going on. Oh, would you rather change into someone else or stay or would you sorry <clears throat> would you rather change into someone else or stay yourself uh stay myself yeah i don't there's nobody else i would rather yeah be. yeah uh yeah i don't know it's just it feel it feels like it would be too much of an adjustment we already answered this oh we did yeah this one says, would you rather date someone who's too res too reserved or too outgoing? Oh, wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. I wrote that an hour before you got here. <laughs> and we might have answered this one already, too. Uh, no. Would you rather never eat again or never sleep again? Uh, oh, never sleep again. That's what I said. Yeah. Get eight extra hours a day. I'm, <laughs> ah, I mean, both would be uh, result in death, probably, but at least one of them you can spend your time yeah well i'm fun. just assuming that whatever you, one you choose you magically don't you just don't have to do it oh oh yeah hell yeah i'll take the extra hours yeah yeah <laughs> stay out all night clubbing and partying i do not i'm tired i need a you need a nap reel it back yeah okay well plug your socials and then we'll do an intro oh uh, okay my um, pretty much instagram is the is the one right now i'm not on twitter anymore um it's at Julia Machin, M-A-C-H-I-N, machine without the E. It's just my name. That's all. Okay. Well, Julia, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks. And we'll hopefully you'll come back. And we'll... Good luck editing. <laughs> <laughs> we will actually put this one out. Okay. It'll come out in two Thank weeks. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I love your podcast. I'm glad I got to come back. And uh, this one will go into the archive as well. <laughs> yeah. Good luck seeing this one, bitches. <laughs> We'll see you next time, guys. This show's a piece of shit.